Hello and welcome to Hawk's Eye View. Today, we're gonna go through and upgrade the Framework Laptop's hinges. So first, we're gonna go through and unscrew these five bottom screws. Then we're gonna open up the laptop itself. From here, if you're going to take it apart for the first time, you're gonna to go to the top corner and lift gently. You have a very long cable for your keyboard and touchpad. Carefully put your finger in the loop and lift up, and this should do a nice little pop. From here, you can actually grab your keyboard and put it off to the side. So here is the hinge kit that should change it from a 3.3 pounds to a four pound hinge. The problem with the previous hinges, if you were a framework first, second, third, or fourth batch with the 11th gen, is that the hinge was pretty weak. So if you had set it on your lap and then you try to give it a decent angle, your laptop screen would just open up all the way. So went through, ordered these. Uh, they've been sitting on my desk for a little bit and finally got some time to upgrade this. So from here, you can slowly lift up on your frame for your screen. Now gently put your finger in between the screen and the rest of the frame here because there's four adhesive pads that are actually holding in place. Don't force this because you have the possibility of going through and cracking your display. So take it slow and you'll slowly be able to feel them give way. With that, you can pick up your frame and put that off to the side for now. Then the next step that we want to go through and do is actually detach the display from the motherboard. Where you're going to do that is here near the bottom of the picture, or you can see me here taking up some extra tape, holding the cable in place, and then carefully lifting up on the monitor connector. Then you can carefully take it out of these little grooves. Then you're going to grab the Phillips head screwdriver that came with your laptop and you're going to unscrew the four screws that actually hold the screen in place. So you have one here and then you have three others around the same area. So I'm going to set these up in line so I know which screw came from what part of the screen. Nice thing is these are all exactly the same size, so it doesn't matter if you get them mixed. So there's one, two, three, and we'll get our fourth one here. Awesome. After that's said and done, our next step is to carefully lift the screen. Now, the instructions from iFixit actually specifically say to either lift it by the sides or the top. Don't touch the bottom. All the sensitive electronics are there. You don't want to mess those up. So carefully pull the screen away. There is still some adhesive or other cables that the screen was stuck underneath. So you just gently pull away at that. And then from there, we're actually ready to take out the two screws on the bottom hinge. In this case, this is the left hinge. So there's two on the motherboard side on both the top and bottom, left and right. And for the screen side, you actually have three screws. So I'm just placing these right off screen to where I know which one goes where. Now, a common thing that you'll see is that because there are magnets holding so much of the framework laptop together, the screws are attracted to them. So you'll start seeing me uh, hold my finger to the screws when we're taking them off and putting them back in because otherwise the magnets will just grab it. So now that we've done the motherboard side of the hinges, now it's time to go through and carefully remove some of these cables. This is for the Wi-Fi antenna and for this ribbon cable that actually supplies power, data, and such to your microphone and to your webcam as well. Be careful with this because there is a screw underneath them. So carefully move them around to where you can see the screw, unscrew that first, and then we'll go through and unscrew the other two. It's fairly straightforward. 
The instructions say it should take anywhere from 11 minutes to 45, depending on your comfort level and how many electronic devices you jump into. But the iFixit is fantastic for tutorial on this. Like I said, these magnets love to grab the screws, so just make sure you keep track of which ones go where. So we can see that the top three screws are taken out. We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom. These ones come out fairly straightforward and easy. Now I've set up my new hinges here on the right hand side. After you've got those five screws undone, this hinge is fairly straightforward to pull out. It's held down by a couple of those magnets, but it comes off fairly easily. So we're good to go. Now, how you can tell which is the left hinge and the right hinge is actually hold it up to the light on this bottom part here. You can see an L or you can see an R. So you cannot tell the difference between any of the markings for the difference between the 3.3 pound and the four pound. So make sure you keep track of which one's new, which one's old. I'm installing the new one, which is the four pound. So we're gonna start by going through and reinstalling the screen side three screws. And as you'll see here, these the screw will start going to the magnet. So again, I'll hold it with my other hand so the tips hold on to the very tip of the screwdriver. All right, the left side was fairly straightforward and easy to go. The top one with all these other cables gets a little bit more tricky. So just trying to get the old hinge out is underneath two Wi-Fi antennas and this ribbon cable. And what I found out, and I even cut footage here, was that because it's so deep underneath these guys, you actually need to very carefully take your sponger end of your tool, the other side of your screwdriver that comes with your laptop, and carefully actually bring up the ribbon cable. Now, I cannot state this enough. Do this carefully, because if you don't and you rip the cable, you're gonna have to get a replacement and put it in place. It's doable, but just take your time because there is sticky adhesive underneath this ribbon cable. The more you actually get underneath it and actually can lift that entire section, it will give you enough wiggle room to go through and release the hinge. So you can see I'm carefully and gently going through and putting my sponger underneath this ribbon cable and then it comes free. It actually holds onto this pigeon cave for the uh, sponger. And at that point I have enough space where I'm able to manipulate the hinge out just like that. Somewhat difficult because the magnets were also grabbing onto it, but we grab the new hinge, set it up to where it's about open the same amount, and we're gonna slide it gently underneath both the ribbon cable and the two antennas and find its right spot here. Once we've got that in place, then we got it right about here, we're gonna attach the top side first for the screen side with those original three screws. And I had to manipulate this a little bit to get this lined up right. And so once I've lifted this, it's sitting in a lot better position. So from now, we can go through and grab our three screws. And because this is so close to that magnet, it loves to grab those things, so now I'm just gonna hold it in place to get the screw started, and then we're good to go. And then it's just rinse, lather, and repeat for these next two screws. Fairly straightforward. And the last screw for the screen side of the hinge. Now the iFixit instructions actually say you can adjust the hinges to where they're either at a 45 degree or a 90 degree angle to make this easier. I did not have too much of an issue with this, so that's awesome. 
your mileage may vary, so make sure to read through those iFixit instructions and do what best works for you. So we want to make sure that these hinges are flat in their locator areas, make sure that the other cables are now laying back where they should be. So in this case, you want to reattach that adhesive, making sure there's enough wiggle room to where when you close the, the lid itself, there's not going to be an issue. I pulled off the old hinges off the top side here and then lifted the top a little bit so that I can actually have the motherboard side of the hinges be closer to the screw holes. This one screw is just off screen, so I get this first one in and then I go grab the second one put that in place and we're able to screw in the second bottom side or left side of the motherboard screw. And we're going to do the same thing for the top. So we've got that screwed in. Our cables are looking pretty good to where they're spun in the same area, routed through the same area. And once those are in place, that's what you need there. And I can already tell that it's more stiff, which is exactly what we wanted in the newer hinges. So after that, we're going to go grab our screen again, grab it from the sides, not from the bottom. Make sure to slide the bottom in first because between both the adhesive and these other cables, if you just try to set it in flat, there's a possibility you're going to put too much pressure on it and snap the screen. So angle the bottom down first and you'll also see that there were these locator pins right next to the display holes line those up put it in place and then put your screws in place here again it's right off screen but straightforward so just the four two on the bottom two on the top just like what we did at the beginning After those are screwed in we're about ready to wrap this project so once we've got this done we need to make sure that we're going to then grab the display and reattach that to the motherboard this one I found to be a little bit tricky just because it's an awkward plug make sure that you line it up correctly and then make sure that your cables are routed in the same area not nearly as tricky as the top side or the right side but make sure it's all set there. Then gently push down on the bottom of your frame for your screen because there is those four adhesive tips that need to go through and reattach. I actually swapped out my NVMe because I was testing a different one. Uh, went and plugged in my original and then screw this bad boy in. All right, and from here, when you get ready to reattach the keyboard it is important for you to go through and check this ribbon cable on the bottom because a lot of folks have had an issue with either their keyboard or their touchpad not working make sure that part that i touched there is all the way plugged in you may have to flip it up insert the cable a little bit more and then close it back down otherwise reattach the keyboard here that orange plug start with the front of your keyboard and then the magnets will hold everything else in place. I am checking that the fit feels fine. Before I screw things in, I'm checking, hey, that is a lot stiffer, which is great. I wanna make sure that all those cables that I ran look fine. Looks like it's working fine on the bottom side. So I don't see anything I'm concerned about. So I'll go ahead and reattach my front of my keyboard. Again, start with the front. Magnets will grab everything else and pull it into place. Gently close the laptop lid. No cracks, no anythings, no any weird sounds. So now it's just time to go through and go ahead and screw in these five screws. Which one thing I gotta say, I absolutely love that these are captured screws to where the screws just can't fall out. So upgrading, changing things, super, super straightforward and simple love the repairability and the upgradability of this i started with the 11th gen uh, motherboard and then when framework actually offered their 12th gen 
and it had more CPUs on there, which is what I was really looking for. So I went ahead and did the in-place upgrade, which was awesome. Swapped out the motherboard, was able to keep my screen, the original frame. And from here, let's go ahead and just make sure if we power everything on, make sure I didn't crack the screen or anything. We can see it actually takes the, the two hands to actually open it up now, which is great. So it should hold in place. So let's go ahead and turn it on. I am going to go ahead and blur my login page, but we can see so far it's coming up. I'm not seeing any issues. I'm running Fedora as my daily driver. It works like a dream. Just upgraded from 36 to 37. No issues thus far. All right, and we're at our login screen. So our hinge upgrade was successful. If you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe.